I call upon the spirit of the owl, messenger of wisdom. Welcome to the temple of the owl. Merry meet. I am your host, Matt Sal, and I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. In this episode, we are going to be discussing Samhain, part of a series on the Sabbaths of the Wheel of the Year. Here at the Temple of the Owl, deep in the forests of Northern California, where we talk about magic and spirituality on all levels, but it's through the perspective of a modern witch. As always, these are just the ideas to help you live a magical life and make you think about things differently. Take the information and do what you will. Witchcraft is a deeply personal religion that is unique to each individual, so feel free to adapt or change anything to work for you. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your support. And a special thank you for those listening on the Troubled Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. Check out troubledminds.org, and I'm personally inviting you to be a part of some of the great conversations with my friend, Michael Strange. Also visit Troubled Minds slash friends and support all of my amazing friends collaborating on this radio station. And don't forget to check out Rohan of the Exiled Minds podcast. I want to thank both of those gentlemen for producing this show. I like to start the show with what I call the MOD or the message of the day and it's a quote I find that helps me explain the show topic and today's quote is when witches go riding and black cats are seen the moon laughs and whispers tis near Halloween and that quote is anonymous But I feel that because it sums up the holiday and how important this time of year is to witches. So let's learn. Let's turn the wheel of the year together and discuss some ways that we celebrate Samhain. Samhain, it's spelled Samhain, but it's pronounced Sao-in. It's a significant festival in various pagan and witchcraft traditions, particularly those with Celtic roots. It marks the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter. It is celebrated on October 31st. Here are some key aspects of Samhain. Samhain has its origins in Celtic traditions, specifically the Gaelic festival of Samhain in Ireland and in Scotland. It was celebrated from sunset on October 31st to sunset on November 1st. Samhain is often associated with the belief that the veil between the physical world and the spirit world is at its thinnest during this time. This belief leads to various practices aimed at communicating with ancestors and spirits. Samhain is a time when we believe the veil between the physical world and the spirit world is at its thinnest. This belief underscores our practices of honoring and connecting with our ancestors and spirit guides. It's a time to seek their wisdom and guidance for the year ahead. Samhain is a time to honor and remember the ancestors. Many practitioners set up 
ancestor altars with photographs and offerings to pay respects and seek guidance from their forebearers. Samhain is a primary opportunity for ancestor veneration. We often create ancestor altars adorned with photographs, candles, and offerings like food, drinks, or symbolic items to honor and communicate with our ancestors. We recognize the ancestral lineage that flows through us and draw upon their strength and knowledge. The thinning of the veil makes Samhain an auspicious time for divination and seeking insights from the spirit world. Tarot readings, scrying, using reflective surfaces like mirrors or water, and other divination practices are common. The heightened spiritual energy of Samhain makes it an ideal time for divination. Many witches engage in tarot readings, scrying, or rune casting to gain insights into the coming year or to seek guidance from the spirit realm. The energies are particularly conductive to receiving messages and visions. Bonfires were historically lit on Samhain to ward off evil spirits and to celebrate the transition from one year to the next. The ashes of these bonfires were believed to have protective properties. Lighting fires, whether bonfires or smaller ritual fires, is a common practice during Samhain. We use fire not only for its practical warmth, but also for its symbolic and purifying properties. Fire can banish negativity and protect against malevolent spirits. Samhain is considered a time when spirits and fairies may roam freely. To disguise themselves from the otherworldly beings, people would wear costumes and masks. This tradition later influenced the development of Halloween costumes. The tradition of wearing masks and disguises during Samhain has deep roots. It is believed to confuse wandering spirits and protect individuals from their interference. Some witches embrace this tradition as a way to connect with the mystical and otherworldly aspects of the holiday. As the final harvest festival, Samhain often involves communal feasting to celebrate the bounty of the season and to strengthen community bonds. Samhain is a great time to celebrate the final harvest of the year. Witches often gather for communal feasts, sharing the abundance of the season with loved ones. It is a time to express gratitude for the earth's bounty and to strengthen community bonds. Many modern witches and pagans continue to celebrate Samhain as a time of reflection, divination, and spell work. It's a time to acknowledge the cycle of life, death, and rebirth, and to release what no longer serves you. In line with the cycle of life, death, and rebirth, Samhain is an opportune moment for personal transformation. Many witches engage in spell work and rituals focused on releasing what no longer serves them, embracing change and setting intentions for the future. Samhain is associated with various symbols including pumpkins, gourds, apples, and grains. 
These items are often used as offerings or decorations. Witches often incorporate seasonal symbols into their decorations and offerings. These symbols represent the vitality of wisdom of the earth and connect us to the natural world. In some traditions, Samhain is a time to honor the crone aspect of the goddess, representing wisdom, transformation, and the, the waning part of the year. Samhain is a time to honor the crone aspect of the goddess, representing wisdom, introspection, and the waning part of the year. We pay homage to her transformative energy and the mysteries of life and death. Some witches visit cemeteries during Samhain to connect with the spirits and pay respect to those who have passed. This practice fosters a sense of reverence and communication with the deceased. It's important to note that Samhain may be celebrated differently among various pagan and witchcraft traditions. Some practitioners emphasize its historical and spiritual aspects, while others may incorporate elements of Halloween into their celebrations. Ultimately, Samhain is a time for introspection, connecting with the spirit world, and celebrating the mysteries of life and death. Samhain is one of my favorite times a year, as well as for most witches. It sums up what being a witch is all about. Death, change, and transformation are all topics of the holiday. The church was afraid of this power, and so they made the stereotypical witch of the holiday. Evil images of the green-faced witches cackling and making potions over the bubbling cauldron. Notice how the holiday is geared towards kids to keep it simplified and childish. The wicked witch of the west and the evil queen that poisons Snow White with an apple. We use this archetype of the evil witch every year for Halloween. It seems that our history is trying to be erased and replaced by some sort of horrific creature. But out of all the witches I have ever met, I have never met the evil witch archetype. Our folklore takes us to a time when the god has traveled to the world of the dead and becomes the underworld god. The goddess grows old and becomes the crone, an old wise lady. She eventually returns to the underworld to be consort to the god. As the goddess leaves the world, the land withers and the plants and herbs withdraw their life force. The story corresponds to the story of the goddess Hecate. As she flies over the land, she takes the life of the plants left on the vine with her sickle. So we harvest our crops and herbs and use and leave the rest for her as an offering. It is bad luck to cut herbs after Samhain. This is the time that the ancients slaughtered the herd and preserved the meat for winter. In astrology, the sun is in the fixed sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is about transformation. It is the sign of the phoenix, a spiritual bird that dies and is reborn in the fire. The old Celtic calendar held this day as the beginning of the dark time. Many witches, included, uh, myself included, view this day as New Year's Day. 
the earth slows down and we embrace the darkness as the days get shorter and the it gets dark earlier this is why we call it the dark time or the dark half of the year Traditions evolve from this, such as carving pumpkins. The night comes faster, and the farmers need light to see and finish their work for the day. They carved many vegetables, like squash and pumpkins. They hollowed them out and put the candle in the middle so the wind would not blow out the fire. They were making, essentially, windproof lanterns. Now we adapt the practice as carving jack-o'-lanterns. And the jack-o'-lanterns are used as beacons of light to guide the dead to find their way home on this magical night. In the old times, children would go door to door and collect alms. Alms are money, food, and other material goods donated to people living in poverty. Alms are given freely as an act of virtue or charity. The word alms comes from the Greek word for benevolent giving. The act of providing alms is called almsgiving. Almsgiving is a common practice in various religions and cultures. So the children dressed up as spirits to fool the dead into not being able to follow them home. We dress up to let them know that we are not dead yet. We are laughing at death because we understand that death is necessary and has a purpose. It is a time to reflect on our own mortal mortality and come to peace with it instead of fearing death. It is a time of deep introspection. We hide our feelings behind our masks of our culture. We must remove the masks of what people think of us and truly be ourselves. We also have a feast for the dead. We honor the ancestors by leaving out their favorite meals, candies and sweets and drink and smoke on their altars. In our family, we make a plate of dinner that night and leave it on the table as if the loved ones are still there. It's like leaving a place at the table. The dark gods are awakening and use this time as the veil thins to gleam insights and transformation from the spirit realm. This is the best time to do any type of divination that you practice. Tarot readings, palmistry, runes, scrying, and I Ching are commonly used on this night. Well, I hope you guys have learned something and can incorporate these traditions into your Halloween festivities. And like I always say, it's not really important as important of um, what, how, how we celebrate. It's more important of why do we celebrate these traditions and keep them keep moving on. I think that that's more important than the things we do and understanding why we do these things. There are many different ways to celebrate and you should do whatever feels right for you. I just want you to enjoy the holiday and have a fun 
and safe time. And the next episode of the series, we'll be talking about Yule. And I hope you guys enjoy these shows, these conversations. Uh, they're just me kind of talking about the things that I want to talk about to for the next holiday. And I hope that you guys can take those and you know maybe learn things and try to incorporate it into having a, a a fun time and living that magical life that I'm always talking about and I want to thank you guys for listening thank you for listening at the Temple of the Owl on Spotify and a special thank you for those listening on the Troubled Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. Until next time, thank you guys, blessed be.